Hello everyone and welcome back to another A-Level Psychology video. Today we're looking at Memory Lesson 5, which is Interference Theory. So we're going to cover a load of stuff over the next 15 minutes or so. So if you're looking for something specific, evaluation points, research, exam questions or whatnot, you can use the timestamps in the description section below to jump straight to that bit if you want. Or you can just watch it all the way through, it's not going to be a very long one. So interference theory is a theory of forgetting in long-term memory, and it's one of two theories of forgetting that you need to know, with the other one being retrieval failure, which is the next video. Now, interference theory suggests that forgetting in long-term memory can occur when two pieces of information conflict with one another, which can then result in not being able to access either one or both pieces of information. Now, just to be clear, information in long-term memory is fairly permanent. We know that from research that we looked at in earlier videos. So when I say memories can't be accessed, it doesn't mean they're gone forever. It just means that we can't find them at this moment, or that they've become distorted in some way because of the presence of another piece of information. Now, there are two main types of interference. You've got proactive interference, which is when old information disrupts the recall of new information. For example, calling your new partner by your old partner's name. Never a good idea. Or perhaps a little bit more relevant, if you were to confuse the sociology that you revised yesterday with the psychology that you're revising today. Or if you were to confuse the French vocab that you revised yesterday with the Spanish vocab that you're revising today. So conversely, retroactive interference is when new information disrupts the recall of old information. So for example, a teacher forgetting the name of old students when new students come in. Now it's always good to have an example on hand for these two types of interference, because sometimes you may need to flesh out an exam question by putting an example in, Sometimes you may get asked for one specifically and you'll need to come up with one. And sometimes you'll need to identify what proactive and retroactive interference actually is in a scenario. But for all of those cases, having a ready-made example to fall back on will help you one way or another. So you can use mine if you want, or you can use the ones that are provided in your textbooks, or you can just think of your own. It doesn't matter, but I would suggest having an example on hand just in case. Now, there's a piece of research that was conducted by McGeoch and McDonald in 1931 that investigated interference, and it found that the effects of interference are most prominent when the two pieces of information are similar. In their research, they asked participants to learn a list of 10 words until they could remember them with 100% accuracy. They then split their participants into six groups and gave each group a different new list to learn. At the end, all of the participants were then asked to recall the initial list again. Now on the right of the screen, you can see what the six new word lists were, and you can also see what effect the second list had on their ability to recall the initial list. And as you can see, the findings clearly show that the more similar the two pieces of information are, the more likely it was that interference occurred when they tried to recall the initial list. Okay, so you've got a little bit of research there that's investigated interference and shows that interference is a thing. So that brings us to the end of the theory element of the video, but before we move on to the evaluation points, let's just have a quick look at a six mark outline. So there's nothing groundbreaking or revolutionary in the six mark of that I've written for you. I've simply gone through everything step by step. What interference is right at the beginning, what the types are, and then the research. I would also just say at this point that although you can technically use McGeoch and McDonald as an evaluation point, and if you ever get asked to just evaluate interference theory for like three or four marks, then by all means use it. However, if you're writing a six mark outline, I would suggest putting this piece of research in the outline simply because otherwise it's going to end up being a little bit short and you're going to lack the breadth and the depth needed to get the full marks. Okay, so use it as an evaluation point if you have an evaluate question by all means, but if you have to outline it for six marks, then I would definitely put it in the outline. Right, so we're going to move on to the evaluation points now. I've got three for you, one strength and two limitations. 
I'll talk you through the short versions first, and then you can pause the video on the written paragraphs if you want, which will come a little bit later on. Okay? So we'll start with some real-world research. Baddeley and Hitch in 1977 got a group of rugby players to recall the names of the teams that they'd played against during a specific season. All of the players had played for the same time interval, so they'd all played for the duration of the season, but the number of games that each player had played varied because some of the players missed matches due to injury. They found that the players who played the most games had the poorest recall of who they'd played during the season, which shows us that interference can account for at least some forgetting in the real world. Okay? However, you have to bear in mind this is a lab study, and despite the evidence that it provides, we have to keep in mind that overall, interference in the real world might actually be quite rare, simply because the conditions that are needed to produce interference are also quite rare. In a lab, that's not the case. So, for example, in the real world, we would only rarely learn two very similar pieces of information within a short time frame and then have to recall them. Whereas in a lab, that's exactly what the researchers ask you to do. They give you something to learn and then ask you to recall it a very short amount of time later. Okay, because the situation is controlled and it all happens quite quickly. Also, in the real world, there are variables that impact us in our learning, all of which can be controlled in a lab. Therefore, a lab can produce the conditions needed for interference to occur in a way that may only rarely happen in the real world. And that means that whilst we can produce interference in a lab, it may not always be a reliable explanation in the real world, and forgetting could potentially be better explained by theories like retrieval failure as opposed to interference theory. And then as a final point, Tolving and Sotkirk from 1971 found that interference could be overcome by giving participants recall cues. So in their experiment, participants were asked to learn multiple word lists, which had all been split into categories. So, for example, animals or jobs. Now, whilst the recall decreased with every additional word list that they had to learn, they also found that the recall increased again when participants were told the categories, which is information that they didn't have in the first place. Okay, so that shows us that interference could be a thing, but interference can very easily be overcome by using things like cues. Okay, so that is a limitation. Okay, so these are the peel paragraphs for the three points that I've just given you. So feel free to pause it at any point and take notes if you want. But just to finish off the video, we are now going to have a quick look at some exam questions that have come up in the past. Okay, so we're going to start off with something nice and simple. This question came up a couple of years ago, and it is a three-parter, so it came up as A, B, and C. And, and as you can see, they are fairly bread-and-butter style questions. So part A, what is meant by interference? Part B, outline a study. Part C, evaluate. Okay, so there's actually a really nice logical structure to these questions. They all are between two marks and four marks, so again, not a massively long piece of writing. The one thing that you do have to be aware of, though, is that in part B, you're not being asked to outline the study, you are being asked to outline what the participants had to do. Okay, It's not a trick question, don't start talking about findings or about conclusions or anything like that, just tell us what the participants had to do. And you can use McGee or McDonald if you want, or you can use Baddeley and Hitch with the rugby players. It's completely up to you, but only tell us what the participants had to do. Now here, you have two application questions. Okay, now these application questions are very, very popular in the forgetting topic, and the context of the scenario is also very, very popular. So effectively, you've got two students, and they're both learning French and Spanish, and they're getting confused between the French and Spanish words. Okay? It's not massively imaginative, but it does the job. 
What you need to do here is to work out where the interference is occurring and then actually explain what's going on. Now, there's a couple of things to bear in mind here. First off, both of the scenarios give you different reasons for forgetting. Okay, so these are so-called combination questions. So you have in your scenario a bit of interference, but you also have a little bit of retrieval failure as well. Okay, I realize this isn't a retrieval failure video, so I'll keep it short. But what you effectively have to do is you need to pick one explanation for forgetting. So let's assume that it's interference because this is the interference video. And you have to say, Aaron is experiencing interference because of the similarity between French and Spanish words. Then you need to explain what interference is um, and kind of get the marks that way. Similarly, for Martin, you also have a bit of interference and you have a little bit of retrieval failure. However, the difference here is that the second question is an essay. Now, it's only a 12 mark essay, which means that this has come from an AS paper, but this could quite easily be a 16 marker that could come up in an A-level paper as well. So here you have to discuss two explanations for forgetting. So here you have to pick out that Martin is experiencing both interference because the French and Spanish words are similar for him, but also he's experiencing retrieval failure because his mum very often gives him cues when she's helping him revise, and these are cues that are missing when it comes to the exam. So he's experiencing context-dependent forgetting. Okay, so again, these are combination questions. For the second one, you have to talk about two. So make sure you kind of condense your outlines a little bit because it's still a six mark outline for a 12 mark essay. But you have to do three marks on interference and three marks on retrieval failure. So in this scenario, you probably wouldn't put the McGee or McDonald study into your outline because it will make it too long. Whereas in the first question, you can just choose one, either interference or retrieval failure, and then just talk about that. Okay, so just make sure you read the question and make sure you read the scenario in order to kind of work out what it is that you need to do. And that brings us to the end of the video. It has only been a short one, which is hopefully a good thing. I hope it's all made sense and I hope it's been useful. If there is anything that you're confused about or if there's any questions that you might have, please pop them in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back to you ASAP. Thank you very much for listening and I will see you in the next one.